Shabbat Shalom, Yasharala. Thank you for joining me on this Sabbath study. Uh, regardless if you're here now or later, uh, we're going to start off with a prayer so we can ask the Ruach to guide us and to protect this line of fellowship. All together, Yasharala, Heavenly Abba, Haya in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for allowing us to be here on your set apart day and that we get to rejoice in fellowship with not just each other, but with the heavenly body. We ask for the mercy and the grace for anything that we have fallen short, Abba, that you correct us, give us understanding, and then give us the strength to repent and to move forward. We ask to, for you to protect this line of fellowship from any demonic works, spirits, or people, Heavenly Father, and that you bless us with understanding and discernment moving forward. Please send your Ruach Kodesh to um, enlighten us, to build knowledge, and uh, just so we could just be more disciplined for you and elevate your kingdom by doing so. In the name of the blood, only begotten son, Yasha Mashiach, Amen. Numbers 10.10. 10. Let's get it. <laughs> it was a struggle. Let's try one more time. Okay, that was better. Had to, had to follow up with that, that one. That one. Woo! -woo. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's do this. Go to my presentation here. All right. So the topic of this study. Ha. I love it, LaField. <laughs> Blow those horns. And we're going to talk about a little bit of the horns. I don't have the uh we'll just get to it. So the star of your God. Um, the tabernacle of Balak, the star of your God, Remphan, or chewing. You can find this verse in Amos 5, verse 26, in Acts 7, verse 43. That is the base of this entire study. Who, what, it, what does it mean when he says the tabernacle of Malak? And who is the star of their God, not our God, their God, right? That's what the baseline of this study is about. We, I hope we can come to full understanding on exactly what it means, because it's much more than just looking at this star and, for example, thinking of some, um, you know, Mason or uh, Judaism. It's much more than that. And that's what we're going to get into this in this study. So let's get it on. So the two verses. One second. Oh, oh, come on now. Come on now. I'm trying to work with me. Okay, here we go. Let's read it real quick. Amos 5 26. But ye have borne the tabernacle of Malak, your chewing or Renfan, uh, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. And then this is Stephen in Acts 7. He's quoting Amos 5 26. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Malak, the star of your God, Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you beyond Babylon. Obviously, he was quoting uh, Amos because they already went to Babylon in um, the New Testament in the book of Acts. So this is a straight quote from Amos because that's the entire point of this study. There's nothing new under the sun. What was happening in Amos was happening in Messiah's time or around his time in the book of Acts. 
And the same stuff that Amos was going through was happening way before Amos. And the stuff that Stephen was going through in Acts is happening way after him. There's nothing new. Same devil, different generation. Yes. Oh, thank you for speaking on this, Anya. Thank you for speaking on this. Um, one second, actually. I Before we, we get started, I totally meant to. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Come on now. One second. I um I wanted to show the audience real quick on my YouTube because I this is built on the code of mankind. So I'm gonna say some points, and if they go over your head, either you need to watch Code of Mankind again or you um you just need to watch it. You probably haven't seen it. So one second. All right, let me share this. Oh my goodness, come on, work with me. Work with me. All right. Thank you for bringing that up. Totally forgot to bring that up. So you don't have to watch the Code of Mankind before you watch this, but you will want to. Trust me. If you like this study, the Code of Mankind is going to blow your mind. Um, so right here on my YouTube, Code of Mankind Part 1 and 2, it builds a beautiful foundation for this study that we're getting into. So I just wanted to show that this is what it looks like. This is what you need to watch because I will reference to the code of mankind at least a couple times in this study. Just want to point that uh, put that out there before we get started because it's all connected. I can't help it. It's, it's going to be a total of like seven hours with this study of watching it, but I, I don't think you will, you will regret it. But it's going to help you out a lot. All right. All right, so let's get, uh, oops, yeah, let's get back, back to it. Let me put in presentation mode, get the full screen. Okay, check your view, all right. All right, here we go now. Now all that said, this is uh, in Amos 5.26 and Acts 7.43 is the base of this study. And the foundation of this study is built on Code of Mankind. All that being said, let's continue with this intro video I have for y'all. The symbols are a language that can help us understand our past. As the saying goes, a picture says a thousand words, but which words? Interpret for me, please. This symbol, first thing that comes to mind, anybody. Hatred, this is a good Yes, yes, interesting. But they would disagree with you in Spain. There they are, robes worn by priests. Now, this symbol, anyone? Evil, la fouche du diable. In English, please. Devil's pitchfork. Poor, poor Poseidon. That is his trident, a symbol of power to millions of the ancients. Now, this symbol. Madonna and child, faith, Christianity. No, no, it's a pagan god Horus and his mother Isis centuries before Christ. Understanding our past determines actively our ability to understand the present. 
So, how do we sift truth from belief? How do we write our own histories, personally or culturally, and thereby define ourselves? How do we penetrate years, centuries of historical distortion to find original truth? Tonight, this will be our quest. Yes, <laughs> yes. This will be our quest. That was a clip from the Da Vinci Code. Um, when you watch that scene, that's in the open, that's like in the first, like, I, I want to say at least like five to 10 minutes of the movie, by the way. You see what Hasatan has done. This is a great example. This is why I used it. He, um, Tom Hanks in this movie, is separating each culture, nation of people, and saying just because they use the same signs, the same emblems, the same clothing, that they that they are different, and you shouldn't judge them based off of your own beliefs on like the 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 swastika, for example, that they shown on there. I'm here to uh, connect the dots to show you in this video that these symbols are from generation to generation, culture to culture, because they serve the same God, the God that we call Ramphan. <laughs> so we're going to flip what Da Vinci Code just said upside down uh, or right side up, as I should say, because they're the ones upside down. So that's what Hatha teaches. Let's go into the word and see what the Ruah got to say about it. Let's, let's continue. Starting off in Amos, <clears throat> chapter 5, verse 21 through 26. I hate, I reject your feast. I will not smell your meat offerings in your general assemblies. Wherefore, if ye should bring me your whole burnt offerings, I mean sacrifices and meat offerings, I will not accept them. I have reject feasts, burnt offerings, meat offerings highlighted to show you that he's talking to the Jews. He, I mean, or Israelites, I should say. Uh, he's talking to the Israelites. So the, the, the Israelites is the audience that this is obviously towards. This is this is this book is written by Israelites for Israelites. Uh, grafted in, so, uh, so uh, strangers that have been grafted in, or bloodline Israelites. This is who he's talking to, uh, to, obviously. Neither will I have respect to your grand peace offerings. Remove from me the sound of thy songs, and I will not hear the music of thy instruments. But let judgment roll down as water, in righteousness as an impassable torrent. Have ye offered to me victims? And sacrifices, O house of Yasharala, 40 years in the wilderness. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Malak and the star of your God, Renfan, the images of them which ye made for yourselves. And I just want to point out also that this is, an, uh, this is a Septuagint translation right here. And, and we read in the beginning, uh, uh, Chewin. But it's obviously Rim fan, but it, it doesn't really matter. The translation of this name is the same. It's the same uh, person or deity. And now going into the New Testament, same story, different generation. Acts 7, 41 through 43. And they made a calf in those days and offered sacrifice unto the idol and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then Allah... Alahai turned and gave them up to worship the host of heaven, as it was written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, Yasharala. And we know, as it is written in the book of the prophets, this is talking about Amos. O ye house of Yasharala, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of 40 years in the wilderness? Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Malak, the star of your god, Remphan. Figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. We see, just touching the surface here, <clears throat> that 
The tabernacle of Malak is connected to the star of Renfan. They go together. They're one in the same. And uh, the beginning of this study, we are going to uh, we're going to pick apart this these two scriptures. And the first thing we're going to do is the, what is listed first: the tabernacle of Malak. Let's come to full understanding on exactly what is the tabernacle of Malak, so we can see how it fits with the star of their god Renfan. This is usually a, a basic illustration of the tabernacle of Malak, uh, a calf or a bull with uh, an opening uh, somewhere uh, around the stomach or lower body. What is the tabernacle of Malak? Well, let's look at Jubilees 3010. Uh, and to this Torah, there is no limit of days and no remission, nor any atonement. But the man who has defiled his daughter shall be rooted out in the midst of Yasharala <clears throat> because he has given of his seed to Malak and wrought and piteously so as to defile it. So we see that you uh, to give the seed to Malak, you can and will defile his daughter. Why? What is he saying? Right here in Enoch 69, 17, and 18. The name of the fifth, these are talking about the watchers, the fallen angels. The name of the fifth is Kazayed. Kazayed. He discovered to the children of men every wicked stroke of the Ruach and of devils. The stroke to the embryo in the womb to di diminish, diminish. How? Can you defile a daughter and give a seed to Malak? Malak is child sacrifice. The original child sacrifice is the stroke to the embryo in the womb. This is how you defile your daughter. The woman that is pregnant will be defiled if you stroke the embryo in her womb. And in doing so, if you are doing it in, in any circumstance, it is a sacrifice uh, passing your seed to Malak. So the original is the original tabernacle of Malak is the womb of a woman. The original tabernacle of Malak is the womb of a woman. So yes, Planned Parenthood is modern day the Tabernacle of Malak or a service for that feeds the Tabernacle of Malak. We still have these rituals because what, what I've been saying, this study is to connect the dots from the beginning of the days to now because there's nothing new under the sun. And I know there's people that have had abortions and, you know, was just a full-on pagan at the time. You didn't know. Repent, ask for mercy. You did not know, okay? If you have done this in the past, you did it unknowingly. But this is facts. All right, so that's the original, and that's what the Tabernacle of Malak, the Tabernacle of Malak is much more than, like, I, there's a reason why I showed the bull, because it's much more than this statue that you see everywhere. It's any type of abortion or sacrifice of blood which is, um, uh, uh, well, uh, blood of a, a man or a woman. That's what the tabernacle of Malak is. So, I mean, just throwing it here, not that I needed it, but the history of abortion, the practice of induced abortion to deliberate termination of a pregnancy has been known since ancient times. We just read in Enoch that this was taught, this is one of the first sins taught to mankind. So, yes, this will date all the way back to ancient times. No secret there. 
All right. Why is Malak a child sacrificial uh, um, altar shaped as a bull? If you have watched the Code of Mankind, you will know that the Canaanites in the land of Canaan, the, the seed of Ham, they, uh, they, their gods are in the shape of creation itself, either the, the earth, the heavens, or within mankind. So if the original tabernacle of Malak is the womb, then and they were going to start, in it, but they wanted to be able to sacrifice a living baby that's not in the womb. What do you think they made the, the statue of Malak, the altar of Malak, look like? The original tabernacle of Malak. This is the original tabernacle of Malak, the female reproductive system. This is the reason why Malak in the, in, the, in the land of Canaan was depicted as a bull. Calves and bulls are very ritual, high ritual uh, animals in that, in that uh, time uh, frame. And this, and this ritual is still happening till this day. Planned Parenthood is just one vice of that, just one. And check this out, family. Malak has an opening. Look where they have where Malak has the opening for the child. All the illustrations of the tabernacle of Malak. Is showing you that this is a outer sacrifice that wasn't done in the womb. The same spot where the woman's reproductive organs are is the same fiery pit where the baby is placed in Malak worship. The connections are undeniable. Every everything about the structure of the actual uh, tabernacle altar of Malak is illustrating you the original Malak sacrifice or sacrificial like uh, location. Nothing new. I mean, it's almost like like too clear, right? The like right below the belt. You have the belt line. You have the belt line. Can't. Can't make this stuff up. Truth in plain sight. And uh, just uh, this is a, uh, just a few snaps from the code of mankind to show you what they were doing from the, the head looking like a calf slash bull to the body. It's all illustrated. And they do this with all their gods, such as the eye of Horus or the eye of Ra is a play it, they have it shaped in this in the same uh an, anatomy of the head uh on the eye of a head of a person and it also matches up with the uh, pineal gland pineal gland that we all know is a very high ritual opening your third eye type deal with them it matches it matches up here's another uh just a idea of what they do with Malak is the same thing with other gods. The goddess that is, that is the inner ear is literally shaped as a structure in your inner ear. And last but not least, this is a Sumerian figure. And we see, once again, so many gods right under our noses are shaped in creation. So I show this to you because... It, it it gives understanding of what they did with Malak is nothing new. They did this with all uh, gods. M majority of the gods come from some illustration or anatomy of mankind, and then the rest can come from anything of the earth or the heavens, everything that the Most High told us not to do, in other words. Oh, yeah. 
you're, this is it. This is an X-ray. I'm pretty sure they brutally sacrificed and uh, uh, cut up folks back in the day to understand all of what we understand. And we have to understand uh, the aspect that we don't know what technology they had back in the day. We've been we've been taught to believe that the the ancients was uneducated for some reason. Just because they didn't have cell phones, which we don't even know what they had, by the way. They, I don't know. They could have had some type of communication at some point in history to communicate long ways outside of, you know, ancient acts that we've been taught. But we just need to remove the idea that they didn't know anything. They were way more advanced than we are, even if they didn't have a cell phone. Yes, exactly. This is this is a war on the numbered, the numbered elect. This is a war on the elect that are numbered. Absolutely, uh, the Tabernacle of Malak. So this is a website of New World Encyclopedia. Just uh, reading more into Malak. Malak can be spelled different ways. It is a, a Canaanite god. Yes, from the land of Canaan. They, uh, the Israelites were surrounded by people that worship calves, bulls, and did Malak sacrifices that I just showed you. That's from, the origin is from the land of Canaan. Understand that, because that's going to come into perspective later on. That a bull illustration for Malak is a Canaanite tradition. Is, is from the Canaanite culture. And it is associated with uh, human sacrifice. He is usually depicted in the form of a calf or an ox, which is just an adult calf, uh, or else as a man with the head of a bull. Uh, etymology. The Hebrew letters usually stand for ma malek or the king. 19th and early 20th century, uh, century uh, archaeology has found almost no physical evidence of a god referred to as Malak or by any similar, um, I don't know that word. You can read it. I can skip it. Thus, it, if such a god did exist, Malak was not the name he was known by among his worshipers but rather a Hebrew transliteration. That's the main point of why I pulled this, because he hit it on the nail with this. And it's not really based off of the fact that there was no evidence found. It's the fact that Malak is not a god. They won't, you won't find Malak worship as a god. Because it's not a god. It is a sacrificial structure, altar, place, ritual that pays tribute to the God of this world. We read it in Amos and in Acts. It says, ye have taken, uh, took up the tabernacle of Malak and the star of your God, Renfan. Who's the God? Renfan. Malak isn't a God. Malak is a tabernacle for ritual sacrifices. You, um, in my research for this, I've seen people debate on Malak and, and, and him being a god and, and is, is he this, is he that? Malak isn't a god. It is, that's why I showed you in the beginning, the original, the Most High in Jubilee straight up says, you defile your, your daughter to pass your seed to Malak. How can you defile your daughter to pass your seed to Malak? It's because it's talking about uh, why you're still pregnant. You can give multiple sacrifices to Malak from the body of a woman to an altar. Malak isn't a god. It is a place where you pass your seed as a sacrifice to the god of this world. Very important understanding here. <clears throat> 
And that's the that's the revelation I had that started this whole thing. When I realized the tabernacle of Malak, Malak isn't a god. Malak is a ritual for the god of this world, which we call Ribban, and at least in um, Amos and in Acts. All right. One second. Let me double check something. Okay, okay. For some reason, it made me think it wasn't recording. It got me scared a little bit. All right, we are good. All right, let's get it. So can Malak be an owl? Like at what this picture is from the Bohemian Grove? where the elites go to uh, talk about how they're going to screw everybody over and sacrifice uh, young, young folk? Absolutely. Because what, I just, what did I just establish? Malak is it the reason why Malak is a bull for the Canaanites is because the, with the gods of the, their land worshipped Bulls in a sense of, you know, their rituals. They used calves and bulls. Malak is a European uh, version of the bull. Malak is a sacrificial altar. I saw people online debating if Malak, if the Bohemian Grove owl is Malak or not because it's not a bull. You, you're missing the idea of what Malak is. Malak, you don't find the name, anybody worshiping the name of Malak because it isn't a god. This is Malak. The owl is Malak. It is a altar for uh, sacrificial services for your for, for Renfan. So absolutely an owl can be Malak. And over here, I just want to show you Athena. This is where you get uh, Athens uh, over, there, uh, over there in what, uh, what's that, Rome. They, like I said, this is a European thing. The owl is European. Uh, it's pretty much just a European version of the bull. That's what they do in Europe. That's the gods that they worship, and that's the animal that they pick for whatever reason. And we see that the, the core, um, and this is not just the only god that's associated, but it's just, uh, she is associated with owls. Europeans have a big thing with owls. So, this is the same exact thing. It's just a different illustration, but it's the same exact thing. And uh, the Bohemian Grove owl and all these weird owls are illustrations of Malak, 100%. Just because it's a different animal doesn't change anything whatsoever when you understand what an owl, I mean, what, what Malak is. All right. All right, so just confirming, uh, we read in the the encyclopedia that this is a uh, god from the land of Canaan. Well, scriptures confirm it. Let's get it. Leviticus eighteen two and three. Speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them, I am Haya, your Allah, after the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So this is the beginning of uh, Leviticus 18. This was verses two and three. So this whole chapter is about the ordinance and the, you know, not doing the with the the doings of the land of Canaan. So we go to 21 to jump to the point. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Malak. <laughs> Neither shall thou profane the name of thy Allah. I am Haya. 
Uh, so we're just confirming that these are these are the what they did in the land of Canaan that was all around the Israelites from Egypt throughout the land of Canaan. So he's warning them, don't do it. I'm not playing. Deuteronomy 12, 30 and 31 as a confirmation. Take heed to thyselves that thou be not snared. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me get a little drink real quick. <clears throat> By following them, after that they be destroyed from before thee, and thou, and that thou inquire not after their gods, saying, "How did these nations serve their gods?" That's the whole point of this. How did they serve their gods? He's warning them about that. Even so, will I do likewise. Thou shalt not do so unto Haya the Allah high for every abomination. To Haya, which he hated, have they done unto their gods? For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. I'm about to show you uh, just a bunch of verses about uh, pretty much Malak, because I want to show you how it is so prominent. It's everywhere in the Bible. Over and over again, like literally over and over and over again, he keeps saying this. And I honestly feel like it's overlooked. So that's why we're going over almost all of the passages right in a, in a quick second. Because it, it's a story. It gives understanding. So we're, this was just establishing that this is from the nations around them and that these nations were the ones so, um, uh, building tabernacles of Malak, which is sacrificial altars oh and i want to establish too um uh, malak is for human man woman child sacrifice that's what the difference of an altar and malak is malak is a sacrifice of a man or a woman or a child i should say mostly for a child that's the highest form of sacrifice is for a pure male child um but that's what separates a regular altar and malak because malak you're straight up sacrificing a person an altar can be animals because say satanists and luciferians around the world uh can uh, still do animal sacrifices for witchcraft and whatnot but malak means you're sacrificing a person i want to forget to say that <laughs> All right, so we so many warnings. Deuteronomy 18, 9 and 10. When thou art come into the land, which <clears> Haya, <throat> thy Allah high, giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. And the rest of that, just cut to the point. Leviticus 20, 2 and 5. Again, thou shalt say, you, and let me, and that's what I'm saying. Again, the Most High is making it so crystal clear, y'all. He knew what was going to happen. So he's going to say, hey, I told you. Because <clears throat> again, thou shalt say to the children of Yasharala, whosoever he be of the children of Yasharala, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Malak, he shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. And I will set my face against that man, and I will cut him off from among his people, because he has given of his seed unto Malak to defile my sanctuary. Where, what's the most high sanctuary? The living body. The living body. So if you give your seed to Malak, you're defiling his sanctuary. And to profane my holy name, uh, the highest form of ritual sacrifice of a person is a baby boy, especially the firstborn. That's the highest form. And we know that the firstborn belong to the most high. 
profaning his holy name. And of course, any of his children, of, uh, but I'm just saying that's the highest form. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Malak and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and I will cut him off. And all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Malak from among their people. So the most high is 100% death penalty. He's not playing with it. If you don't want to put him in a death penalty, the most high will turn his face from you. It's not a game. The sins. Also, we had showed plenty of the warnings, but now we're going to see that they still did it right here in the in the the Tanakh. Second <clears throat> uh, Kings 16. And uh, just showing that this is uh, King Ahaz, verse three. But he walked in the way of the kings of Yasharala. And that's sad. He walked in the ways of the kings of the land of Israel. And what was that? Yea, and made his son to pass through the fire. Just think about this, family. It was such a taint. It is such a toxic um, kingship for the land of Israel that this was known as the ways of his fathers. In 2 Kings, this was something that was normal because he walked in the ways of the rest of the kings. That's That should blow your mind. This is how normal it was back in that day. According to the abomination of the heathen, as was warned, once again, in 2 Kings 21, and he made his son a whole nother king, just showing, just jumping around, showing you that this has been going on since the beginning. Pass the son through the fire. And you see his son here, right? Because that's a high form of sacrifice, a baby boy. And observe the times and enchantments and all the wicked things of the other nations. And then we did have a righteous king here and there. Don't get me wrong, as it's stated in 2 Kings 23.10. And he defiled Toeth. This is a pagan god, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter pass through the fire of Malak. So he defiled this god and tore down the tabernacle of Malak so nobody will sacrifice to on that tabernacle but the majority of the kings obviously is straight up says he walked in the way of the kings the majority of the kings uh uh walked in the way of Renfan. continuing now we're going to the prophets we were in the history of the kings but now let's hear from the prophets and they have built the high places see the high places of toeth uh, like I said, a pagan god, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Jeremiah uh, 19. And they have built also the, the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal. And in Jeremiah 32, and they have built high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Malak. And I, I'm going to talk about the different gods later, but I want to make a point right here that we see Toeth, was uh, the tabernacle of Malak for Toeth was in the valley of Hinnom. And then we see Baal was also in the Valley of Hinnom. My point is I'm showing you that the different names of the gods don't matter, y'all. There's one Satan. There's one devil. I mean, there's one Satan, many devils. There's one adversary, many devils. So it doesn't matter the names, just like I showed you with the owl. It don't matter that they, the Bohemia Grove use an owl and not a bull. It's the same ritual to the same God. Okay?
Now, in, this, in another prophet, we'll go to Ezekiel. Moreover, thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne unto me, and these hast thou sa sacrificed unto them to be devoured. Is this of thy whoredoms a small matter, that thou hast slain my children and delivered them to cause them to pass through the fire for them? Thou hast also committed fornication with the Egyptians, thy neighbors, great of flesh, and has increased thy whoredoms to provoke me to anger. Well, it sounds like exactly what we were warned not to do. We just read it. Ezekiel 20, 31. For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired by you, O house of Yasharala, as I live, says, Haya, Alaheim, I will not be acquired of by you. Ezekiel 23, 37. That they have committed adultery and blood is in their hands and with their idols have they committed adultery and have caused their sons whom they bear unto me to pass. Oh my goodness. I don't know if y'all can see it. My bar is in the way. I don't know. Let me see if I can move it. There it is. For them, them to pass through the fire to devour them. So this is very, very obviously a big deal from the from the warning in the Torah to the history to the prophets, the same story. Doesn't matter what name the of the God they are worshiping at this the, that time, they all do the same thing. They pass through the fire to Malak. They all do the same ritual. Doesn't matter. Which brings us, just want to throw this in here. We're going to get to the star. Obviously, this is an illustration of the star of fan. People call it the seal of Solomon. And the more I understand, I'm starting to believe that this 100% is the seal of Solomon. First Kings 11. And King Solomon was a lover of women. And he has 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And he took strange women. That means uh, women uh, serving other gods, as well as the daughters of da-da-da-da-da, all, all of these other nations in the land of Canaan, pretty much, of the nations concerning whom the Most High forbade the children of Yasharala. We read that, saying, ye shall not go into them, and they shall not come into you, lest they turn away your hearts after their idols. Solomon claimed to these in love, and it came to pass in that time of the old age of Solomon that his heart was not perfect with the Most High, as was the heart of David, his father. And the strange women turned away his heart after their gods. This Solomon built high places to uh, Chamos. Chamos, and we're going to see, it doesn't matter about the name. What is this? How do they serve these gods? Let's read, which is the idol of Moab and the, their king, the idol of the children of Ammon and all of these gods. <laughs> and thus he acted towards all his strange wives who burnt incense and sacrifice to their gods. And Solomon did that which was evil in the sight of the Most High, <laughs> and went not after the Most High as David, his fathers. Sacrifice to their idols. It doesn't say it, but I can a thousand percent tell you, this was Malak. That's, this is the high worship of how you sacrifice to their idols. He was doing what was evil in the sight of the Most High. And he was sacrificing to these gods that we were seeing and warned about. It's the same thing, the same exact thing. And so if Solomon was raising up and he built high places for these gods, he was raising up the tabernacle of Malak, which means he was honoring the star of their god, Remphan. 
It's the same story. Just different generations, different people. And um, yeah, uh, Solomon was the origin king that brought in this into the kingship of uh, Israel. Because, I mean, let's remember, it says, but he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Who started it? Solomon did. And what did all those kings do? Raised up the tabernacle of Malak. Nothing's new. But Abba is so good. He is good all the time. Genesis 22 and 2. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon the one mountain which I will tell thee of. This sounds like, anybody ever thought that this sounds like Malak, sacrificial services as Malak is? Very interesting. Have anybody ever thought of that, about that perspective of Isaac and Abraham? That this was what the Most High warned us from doing. Well, he didn't uh, warn us from doing this in a, in a sense of the scriptures until after this story. But this is a very interesting story. Verse 7, and Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, my father. And he said, here am I my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, Allah will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. We know who that lamb is. I don't think I need to go over that, right? We know the lamb is Messiah, but a lamb was not provided in this story. Now from 10 to 13, and Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son, and the angel of the Most High called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest Haya, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. This story, Abba, is, is so many different meanings. We Everyone has the original meaning that this was, um, you know, we see the lamb. This was a foreshadowing that he, the Most High, will send his only, his only begotten son in a lamb. But we don't talk about the ram enough. This is from everybody uh, has heard the 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 nickname title for Abraham. He's Father Abraham, the father of many nations. What we have seen right here is. Abba not only has the, the differentiate himself from Malak. Malak is the opposite of what happened in this scenario. For self-gain, and we see in, I don't know if we talked about it thoroughly enough yet, but with the elites nowadays, with celebrities, we if you're in the truth and in the know, you know that every single one of them have done sacrifices of loved ones, of children, of family members. Malak sacrifices goes way farther than Planned Parenthood. It goes from, Planned Parenthood is from the womb, but there is still people doing Malak altars around the world in a lot of different ways. Abba separates himself from that, and he says, I will provide a ram. A ram is a symbol of Abba, the strong leader, because the lamb is the son. What I felt from this was Abraham and Abba's love for each other was mutual. 
to the, to the extent that Abba was testing him and he saw that he loved him so much that he was willing to give his son that Abba said, no, Abraham, I'm going to give my son because my son has the power to rise from the dead <laughs> like that. I promise you that seed, I'm going to give you that seed and I will provide a ram, which was a peace offering of Abba that was given to um that were placed um. Um, Isaac, I mean, it's just, it's it's just such a, a a a beautiful, loving moment of two fathers, the future father of many nations, and Father uh, Abba, the Creator. Of they're pretty much like I will give my only begotten Son, and I was like, I will give no, I will give my only begotten Son. <laughs> it's it's like. It's just, it's, it's a beautiful picture of what it means to be in the covenant with Abba. That in other words, the devil of this world will force you to give up a loved one. Abba is the exact opposite. He has given us everything we need and he has given us to be able to put an animal in the stead of our loved ones, of our lives. And then, of course, he sent the lamb. We are living in a time that we're post lamb of the uh, of Messiah's sacrifice. And so Abba, in other words, has given us everything that these people that worship Rimfan want, but no one sees it. Abba has given us everything, family. That's what this story is about. Abba says, I will give you a ram. From father to father, I will give you a ram for the burnt offering. And I will provide the lamb for the eternal offering. Abba's done everything. <laughs> it's beautiful. He's done everything for us. But if you are walking in the flesh, you can't see it. You want, you want what you want now. You, people don't want to wait. He, everybody wants what they want now. And it doesn't work that way. Let me read Isaiah that, uh, 53, 5 and 7. That kind of embodies how I saw this. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and Haya has laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Abba has provided everything. This is it's the exact opposite of what we're reading about. And so all glory to our heavenly father that um, we have the mercy in the, in the, the grace to be able to be corrected and to not have to like, um, you know, give up our lives because we all have fallen short, right? Family. That being said, have y'all thought of, the original golden calf from the Israelites was the, I mean, the golden calf, the original golden calf, the first sin of the nation of Israel as a nation was Malak worship. The golden calf was Malak family. This is, look at the context of how it's written in Acts and then even uh, in obviously Amos. He misses the calf and they made a calf in those days. And offered sacrifice onto the idol. It's the same story. What we just read, Malak is Malak is a calf or bull. They made a calf and offered up sacrifices to the idol. There's nothing new under the sun. And rejoice in the work of their own hands. And then he says all of this for what? And then he says, he had took the tabernacle of Malak 
This is the example of the first Malak Tabernacle family, the golden calf. Woo! There ain't nothing new under the sun. Good gracious. Oops, oops. Oh, come on. Yes, I I believe they sacrifice people. A hundred percent. A calf. They left the land of Egypt knowing about Malak worship. And then they built a calf and offered sacrifices to it. That's literally what they did the entire time. Why were they worried about it all throughout Leviticus, all throughout the Torah? And then right before he mentions the tabernacle of Malak, he mentions the calf that was offered sacrifices in the wilderness. Is he not putting an example of what already happened and then said what they did? Obviously, I try looking for any context. It ain't going to straight up say it. Some stuff is um, coded. But it's a calf, and he offered sacrifices like the Egyptians. What do we just read? Every single one, same thing. Same thing. Don't believe it could be anything else. Right. I, uh, I think the only reason, the only reason, Aaron was given the mercy to live was the fact that he built it, but he wasn't a part of the, the offerings. And what happened, and let's, let's think about the judgment. What happened at the golden calf? The Moses threw the tablets, and then the sons of the Levites killed, the sons of the Levites killed everyone that participated in the Malak worshiping. What is the same exact judgment we just read for sacrificing to Malak? When you sacrifice to Malak, they say to stone him, death comes upon them immediately. The story is identical. They just don't straight up tell you in the golden calf story that they sacrifice people. But the, the penalty was death immediately, and they built an altar that was a calf, and they built and they, and, and they offered sacrifices to it. All of them, it's the same exact story. I mean, and then we go Exodus 32, 8, just going to the, oops. Oh, going the wrong way. Just showing they made a mowing calf and have worship it and have sacrifice there onto it. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, do what you want with that. They, they, he was warning them about that in the Torah because they already had an example of that. I don't believe they were offering anything else. And just to add some, a, a cool little point of view to it to show you how everything's connected. If you don't know, every 2,021, 60 years, approximately, we have a new constellation age, per se, which means a new constellation starts at the spring equinox. This process is called precession. So the constellation is moving. If you're looking on here, we have the 12 Mazarovs, the 12 Mazarov that the sun goes through. We're right here. So we go, it goes into left, uh, just like how you read Hebrew, it, uh, it's moving from uh, right to left. So we're in Pisces right now. We're at the end of Pisces. Probably within the next 200 years, it's going to uh, the spring equinox in March 20th will be in uh, the constellation of Aquarius. So it's moving this way, but time is going left to right. I mean, right to left. So we're right here right now, but next month we start in Pisces and the following month is Aries, the Taurus, the Gemini, and then we get into Cancer and we're in the summertime to Leo, to Virgo, to Libra, and so on. 
So we're about right here. I put this little uh, uh, tack to show you that we're at. So if we do this math of the constellation moving about 2,000 years, and the golden calf happened, happened roughly between 35 to 3,600 years ago, that would mean about almost a constellation and a half. And this was almost done. So let's say about 2,000 years to the end of, to be about right here. They were at the beginning of Pisces, which was right after Messiah's time. And Messiah's time was about right here at the end of, of Aries. And then you go another, uh, what was it? Another, what am I looking at? 1,500 years, and you will, it will bring you to the beginning of Aries, just a little bit into the Aries. So my point is, when we read in Exodus 32 and 4, during, this is the chapter of the golden calf. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool after he may, had made it a molten calf. And they said, these by thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. They're saying the golden calf is the gods that brought him out of the land of Egypt. Well, this is no... We, we I read a verse earlier that says that give them up to the worship of heavens. This is more than just on earth. Look at the timing. Nothing is a coincidence. If time is going this way and the beginning of the year starts here, let's say the new moon is right after that. They left in unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. So that means it will be at least halfway through the first month. So the new moon here, most likely when they left, the sun was in Taurus, which obviously is a bull. So the sun rise in Taurus, the time of the Exodus, which would make sense why they said the calf, these are the gods, O Israel, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Because that's how they worship gods back in that day. The sun was in Taurus and rise in Taurus the day they left Egypt. I just thought it was a cool connection how everything is connected. Just want to throw that out there. All right. We're done with Malak now. Here we are on Renfan. We see all these, uh, I'm just showing how devilish this star looks. It, it, it has um, six sides within, the, within it. It has six pointers. Um, wait a minute, what is this showing? This is six, whichever, six, six, six. Yeah, what is, what is this one showing? Because this is the six size, six points, whichever. It's um, coded in 666. We will see how the cube, this is where you get the black cube from because it is a cube that is the origin of the black cube is the Star of Renfan. The origin of the cross worship, which folds into a cube, is the origin of cross worship. The, we see more of even um, the math. Everything is coded in 666, in other words. Even with the math of the star, this is a hexagram, and we know that a hex is a spell or a curse. No coincidence that a hexagram is what the star of Grim fan is. We see it on the dollar bill. We see it throughout all nations. So now let's get into the detail about this star for their God. First of all, let's prove that this is what the star of Riffin is. Let's prove it first. 
And let me say this, family. If you use the illust- uh, the image of Saturn on the top of Saturn, and they, and people point that there's a cube on the top of on the top of Saturn, guys, we can't do that. We can't clown CGI from these space images and then go use a CGI space image to confirm the star belongs to Saturn. We have to study and, and dig deeper. I see too many people in the truth using an image, but then go around clowning space images. We have to be consistent. Let's be consistent now. So right now, when you go, you can go and look into the meaning of, of Renfan. Renfan literally means Saturn. So right then and there, we can confirm to say the star of your God, Saturn, for modern day speaking, at least at this time, they called it at their time, they called it Renfan. But this is one and the same as Saturn. All right. Confirmation. There's no debating with that. You look up Renfan. It means Saturn for modern time. So that that being checked off, confirming that Renfan is Saturn. Now we're going to confirm that this star, which is used in Judaism, of course, is the, the, the star of their god, Saturn. We're going to confirm it now. Acts 7.43, and I've, I've broke this down on a TikTok video, so you could be familiar with this, but if not, I'm going to do it for the video regardless. We just read that uh, in Acts 7, 43, that that's where uh, Stephen is preaching to a group of Jews about the star of their god, Renfan, in the tabernacle of Malak, because there was people in Judaism at that time doing exactly what they were doing, and that's why uh, that was uh, from Amos's time. And so we go to the end of this chapter in verse 58 of chapter 7 of Acts. The group of people stoned Stephen. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet named Saul, which we know as Paul as well. So in other words, Paul is or Saul was 100 percent involved in the stoning of Stephen for him preaching against them about the tabernacle of Malak, the star of their god, Renfan. Then now we fast forward to Galatians chapter 1, 13 and 14. For ye have heard of my conversion in time past. In the Jews' religion, Judaism, how that beyond measure I prosecuted the church of Allah. Uh, I would say stoning Stephen is prosecuting the church in times past. And doesn't this sound familiar? And profited in the Jews' religion above many of my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. The traditions of his fathers is the tabernacle of Malak, worshiping the star of their god, Renfan, which is what he was doing in Acts 7, which is why he was prosecuting the church, because they didn't serve the same God. That's the point. So, Galatians chapter 1 confirms that the star used in Judaism is the star of their god, Renfan. Paul straight up tells us that he was in Judaism when he was prosecuting the church, stoning Stephen. Can't make it any more clearer than that. So that being established, we have confirmed that this star it is Saturn. Renfan is Saturn. And we have confirmed that this is the actual star of Saturn. Period. It's confirmed. We don't need to use an image, some fake imagery from uh, a, a cube on top of Saturn. That's just half the time letting us know what it what it is, but it's still a fake image. The the uh, the planet Saturn, the star Saturn, don't look like that. 
it looks like an eyeball. It don't, you can't look at it and see the top of it like that. That's all fake. All right, now moving forward, here's something so interesting. Oh, goodness. The Holocaust, in modern-day translation, is a destruction or slaughter on a mass scale, especially caused by fire. That's the first definition. Then it says, historically, a sacrifice in which the offering was burned completely. Let's go to an older translation from the 1900. Holocaust is a burnt whole offering. A burnt sacrifice or offering, the whole of which was consumed by fire. Guys, Judaism, the Holocaust was a Malak ritual. Holocaust was a Judaism Malak ritual. It's straight up, why did they use the name, the word Holocaust? OMG. The burnt sacri the sacrifices, those, I don't know how much real, how real the Holocaust was. But I know there was people that died, don't know if they were even Ashkenazi Jews. But at the end of the day, I know people died, and it's because it was a huge ritual, just like we do nowadays. We see stuff happening here and there, and it's all gematria rituals. This was a huge Ritual for Malak, single-handedly by the synagogue of Satan. Can't make this stuff up. Cannot make it up. This is the, the, especially with the name. You think like out of all the names, Holocaust, literally a burnt sacrifice and offering, Malak. Now check out, check this out. If you, I mean, this video is kind of crazy. I got coming up, but it kind of, I mean, I couldn't help but show it because it makes so much sense with what this Holocaust in Judaism and how history is fake. It's supposed to be a uh, Judaism ritual in the early 1900s, I believe. We see the star. See the star right there. Malak. What do you know? Judaism. The star, the tabernacle of Malak, the star of their god, Rimfan. And look where the opening's at, right at the belly, right at the hips.
crazy. I mean, yes, of course, this will be on YouTube. Um, you can find this, I can't remember where, but this is on YouTube somewhere. I mean, it is what it is. Thought it was interesting. I can't, obviously, can't confirm much from it, but uh, looked pretty authentic to me. All right. Oh, so now, bruh, why is it just playing? I didn't tell you to play. So now we're we're just going to look at that this isn't this isn't just for like the synagogue of satan the in judaism judaism is just the 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 um judaism is the religion that has infiltrated the most highest people that's what judaism is judaism is the product of malak tabernacle of malak the star of their God, but everybody's doing the same thing, worshiping the same star, doing the same um, sacrifices to um, their Malak. It's, we don't be narrow-minded and think that this is only in Judaism. This is the entire world. And so that's what this next clip is to show you the entire world worship the star of Renfan. Let's get it. Like hoodie, we it's um it's a company hoodie. We print our mission on the inside. What? Oh, oh my really? god, the inside of the hoodie, everybody. Take a uh, moment. What is it? Making the making the world more open and connected. Oh my god, it's like a secret Ooh. cult. Look at that. Making the world open and connected. Stream graph platform and this weird symbol in the middle that is probably for the Illuminati. And these extra lines match the lines to generate the star tetrahedron. You see this star that is also used in witchcraft. All right. From, of course, medicine. Now, continuing this. We we see that um we see that everyone has a star, but there's many ways to worship Satan. <laughs> we see um like the Nike check, for example. And what what I was talking about, how there are many gods. I mean, yeah, many gods, many devils. But there's only one Satan. There's only there's only two sides. And everyone, it doesn't matter God or goddess, always uh, leads people back to Satan, the adversary, their kingdom. Because Nike, for example, this is, Nike is the illustration of the rings of Saturn. But Nike is a goddess of victory. 
where Olympians get crowned with those wreath uh, things. So the goddess Nike isn't Saturn. She's a whole nother deity, but she leads people back to Satan, AKA Saturn. And it's like this in so many different ways. So you can see a, a, a god or a goddess, but they'll always lead you back to the seal, uh, I mean, the, uh, the star of Rifan. So many different ways to see it. It's not just one way. All right. And so we, we have the black cube. And, you know, when you're, when you're in Babylon, you have to understand everything is controlled from control uh, of the education, which is why we wear literally a black cube on our hats. Because it, it's, it, it, it's like we wear black robes, a black hat with a cube at the top. We graduated from the school of Saturn. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. Because everything in this country was built on the back of Saturn worshipers, Satan worshipers. That's why 53 of the 56, probably all of them though, was Masons that signed the Declaration of Independence. And I'll let you know that they run everything because they put their signature on the dollar bill. Everything is controlled. And they control spirituality. All three religions, well, at least that they say come from Abraham, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, all gives uh, respect and tribute to the star of Redfan from, well, Judaism being the synagogue of Satan to the cube, the the I showed earlier the cross falls into a cube and the Kabbalah all fits into the star. And all religions and Christianity were, were Freemasons, which we're about to get into the thick and gritty of that, that all of these people, it doesn't matter what religion, all religions and gods point back to Saturn, which is Satan. All of them. And if you don't see it, it's because everything is Satanism. Everything. That's my whole point I'm showing you from the, the country you, you lived in, you were born in, to your education, to your spirituality, to your understanding. They control your understanding if you're not being led by the Ruach. People ask me, if you're saying everything was scribed by Masons, then you're saying everything is corrupted. I'm telling you the word, the, the book can be corrupted, but the message cannot. This is, the, this is what it means to be uh, filled with the Ruach and to be guided. Because they're going to leave their breadcrumbs to show you who they are. This right here on the left is KJV 1611. It's the same uh, Masonic uh, temple illustration in the opening pages the sun the moon the eye or name the everything it's the same exact thing they're showing you who they are and the same thing I, I exposed the sephir what the the angle this is a sephir logo what are the odds that the logo angle they use for this is 33 degrees right here at the bottom is 33 degrees Masons literally use this angle outside of the, the main uh, logo. They also do use this 33 degree angle. And what do you know? In plain sight, they're showing us. And then we have this 33 degree angle right here. And then guess what? Right on it. This is what a square is. Square can be illustrated in different ways. This is just a different style square. So right here on top of the Sephir, just like the KJV showed us, the Sephir shows us. This is a Masonic scribe, 33 degree angle with a square and compass. They're show showing us who they are and only the Ruach can guide us through the deception.
But the Most High gave us warnings for this. He said, beware of the scribes. This is why we have to use precept upon precept. This is why we have to study. This is why we have to pray to be guided. It's the only way to reveal the mysteries of the kingdom. And the most important thing in this walk is to find true salvation without them controlling your understanding and spirituality through religion. That's how it works. If you don't see it, it's because Abba hasn't given it to you because your, your, your Ruach is not willing. You, you are doubting the Ruach. Everything is corrupted. This is what I'm showing you. We are in the last days, family. We woke up unknowingly in Babylon. In like that's my point. Every single thing is Satanism. Everything leads back to Saturn, which is the adversary. From Masons wearing aprons. I just put this because this is their God. This is their God, the lawless one. The white Jesus, he might as well be wearing an apron. They put aprons on in Freemasonry to illustrate wisdom, as that, that they are initiate of wisdom, because that's what Adam and Eve put on after they ate of the tree. It's blasphemy. That wasn't a good thing. Do we see? Say, well, what are, we, what, what are we warned about? The rituals in Egypt, right? Well, this stuff is from the belly of the beast in Egypt, belly. Uh, the, the, from Egypt to America. It's the same, it's the same thing. Same ritual. Nothing's new. And then look at their feet. Both of their feet are forward. And if you actually look at uh, Washington's feet, or even theirs right here, you see their stance. The military do stances like this, by the way. We see this in their, their feet positions. The Bible, all throughout the Bible, he's telling us about this Satanism in plain sight. Proverbs 6, 13. He weaketh with his eyes and he speaketh with his feet. With his feet. They're showing us that they, they do things to... to for their army, for Hasatan's army. They do things, and the Bible tells us about it, if you have eyes to see. Ezekiel warns us that they had their backs to the temple, and their faces towards the east, and they worship the sun towards the east. Well, guess what they do in Freemasonry, which is another system of Judaism. Uh, Freemasonry is a study of Judaism or just a study of Rift fan worship. It's just another way to worship their God. Judaism worships Rift fan differently than um, Freemasonry does and other nations does, but they all do the same core, have the same core values and do the same core rituals of children's sacrifice and all this weird stuff. They sit towards the east and all their altars are facing towards the east in all the churches, even modern day churches. Check them out. Look it up. You'd be surprised. Most churches, altars face towards the east because we live in Babylon. Proverbs 6, 9, uh, what's it, 6, 13. He teaches with his fingers. From handshakes to putting your hand in, inside your your jacket, there's uh, to the to the oath of silence. He teaches with his fingers, and even over here, the M is the nod to free uh, to masonry. From athletes, we know LeBron, LeBron, super super weird, Luciferian to the Pope, to Hitler, to Columbus. History's fake. This Holocaust was a ritual that everybody that's in Satanism knew about that was a part of. To modern day athletes, to modern day religion, everybody's in on it if you are in the spotlight, if you are in a, a position of control. 
There is not one person family that isn't in on it that's in control or a top celebrity. And then, of course, the all-seeing eye that Saturn looks like. Yeah, when you look in a telescope, Saturn with the rings looks like an eyeball. Job 15, 12. Why does thy heart carry thee away? And what do thy eyes wink at? When you wink, that leaves one eye open, does it not? And it's, he's talking to those that wink that are against the most high. It says it right here in verse 13 that thou turneth thy spirit against Allah high. Same thing as Psalms. It's all throughout the Bible. He's telling us about their, the, the Satanists that worship Saturn. Their characteristics is all throughout the Bible. From human sacrifice to the eye, to the hands, to well, let, let them wink. He, it's, it's nothing's new, family. It's nothing new. It's all here. To controlling overall information. And we know that every single person here is either a, a either a home a homegrown Jew or they're they're married to a Jew. All these people here. And we know they are Revelation 2 9 and 3 9. But we now need to understand that this star and this religion is literally every single religion that is not the most highs. Did you hear the most high say, This one people in the land of Canaan, this one God? He says, Do not do anything that's in the land of Canaan, none of their gods, plural. Don't do what the Egyptians do. Don't do, because it didn't matter what God uh, of from whatever land, because it was the same thing, same ritual, different God, all leading back to Saturn. To different presidents across the world that's supposed to be arch rivals to our fake space troopers to our black heroes everybody's in on it everybody's in on it rosa parks was in on it it's funny mlk mlk abbreviated um, um martin luther king abbreviated mlk is the same abbreviation for Malak. Malak is MLK. Coincidence? I don't believe in it. Everyone's in on it and everyone serves the same deity. That's why every single one <laughs> has the same star. Everyone uses the same star. Oh, one, one second, real, real quick. I want to point out, if you know about, uh, like, I, one more time, when we talk about serving other gods, we know that the Apollo mission, Apollo is a sun god. It's a sun god, right? So why do uh, 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 astronauts have uh, the star of Saturn when they worship the sun? We know Freemasonries, like I said, they face the east, right? They they face the east. Why? Because they worshiping the sun. It says this in Ezekiel 18, 16, I mean 816. So why do everyone use the star of Saturn? We're going to get into that in a little bit. Everything leads back to Saturn. Does it matter if you worship a sun, a sun deity or any other deities? And another, another way to see uh, Saturn worship in plain sight, if you look this up, uh, Asherha poles, this is what it's talking about, obelisk, graven images, they worship each his own graven image. So as they go straight in, they will sacrifice their children to devils. 
So if your land had a obelisk, this land sacrificed their children to devils. What's Bohemian Grove? Bohemian Grove is a product of Washington, D.C., right? Well, that's what they do. All these lands, and these are around the whole world, and even in this uh, caption from this picture, ancient Egyptian obelisks used in for the worship of satanic gods, including Malak, the god of child torture. This is a sign that the land is under Satan's rule and that they worship, I mean, that they sacrifice their gods to uh, their children to uh, gods of this world. There's nothing new. There's nothing new. Everything's super original. Yes, uh, obelisk is a phallic, a uh, man's private part. Everything's fertility, fertility, but that's a whole nother study. That's that's honestly what the the, the symbol of everything is: uh, birth, creation. That's what the star of Rimfan is. Star of Rimfan is an illustration of creation. That's why everything in creation has the geometry of the star of Rimfan. You'll find that knowledge in the code of mankind. All right, uh, another video showing the many ways the Star of Redfin can be illustrated in plain sight that you may not think is going back to Saturn, but they all are. Take the two triangles that make the Star of Redfin, break them. Put them back together, and what do you know? It makes a swastika. So the same people that used the swastika to prosecute the Jews was honoring the same God. And a swastika looks just like a cross. There's many different crosses to the peace symbol, or just a broken cross, Leviathan cross, hit everything hidden in plain sight. to the pagan cross of Christianity. And then we have, um, these are also sun worshipers, but we have the Pope that's of sun worship, but they honor the star of Saturn. Everything leads back to Saturn. Why? Because, well, we're going to get into that L is the same thing. I did a, a study, a short video on this on my uh, Instagram last week. But we see, oh, we see that the equivalent of L is Dagon. This is a Dagon cat. It's a fish cat. So Dagon is the equivalent of L, and L is Saturn. And this is why right here. Uh, everything leads back to Saturn. Why? Because Saturn is portraying as the father of heaven. This is why it doesn't matter if you're doing sun worship or any other worship. Like I said, like Nike is a, a, the goddess of victory, but she still uh, pays tribute to Saturn's rings. It's because Saturn is the father of heaven uh, to the occultists, of course. So the same thing that the father asked Abraham to do, Saturn is asking his people to do, but he will not provide a ram or a lamb. He literally is like, give it to me. Saturn is just like what all the angels do. All the angels answer to Abba. So whatever an angel does, he's paying tribute to his master, which is our heavenly father. This is what all the angels do. Saturn is the lead deity. This is why everyone pays tribute and wears the star of Renfan, because he is the father of all stars, all deities. So all deities work for one kingdom, and that kingdom is Satan, which is illustrated as a star of Saturn, okay? 
We're going to get, we're about to get more into just different names that Saturn has. Saturn can be, can be the equivalent of Dagon. That's why on the Dagon hat, he shows you the stars of Saturn on Dagon. Saturn can be L, which is why, what, 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 there's a reason why I showed y'all this family. Where's it at? There's a reason why I showed you this. The scribes, everyone's like, well, why does Daniel has E-L? Why does all these people in the Bible name has E-L or Y-A-H? Why does everyone in the Bible then has E-L and why? I, well, I'm showing you why. Through education, through spirituality and religion, and through understanding. That's why everyone's able to have L or y'all in their name. That's why. This is the clip I showed. I'm going to show it again for the record for the video. This is why today uh, we know that Saturn was referred to as L. E-L. L is a name that was given to the planet Saturn. And therefore, if you are worshiping Saturn, you represent the law. You are referred to in church today as an elder. How did you get to be an elder? You got to be an elder because you were one of the elites. How did you get to be an elite? You got elected because through elections, all of our system is based on occult, mystical words and terms going back to the planet Saturn. Exactly. Everything leads back to Saturn. So anything that you've been given outright is wrong. Everything, family, is wrong. Everything leads back to Saturn. Everything's a trick to get you to worship Saturn. Everything's a trick to get you to call on Saturn. Why you think he says, don't have other God's name in my mouth? All of them leads back to Saturn, which is the adversary, Satan. Yes, this is why we use... Allah hi, Allahim, instead of Elohim and all of that. It's it's a trick. All right. So let's go. So yes, we talked about El, which is Saturn, is depicted as the father of heaven. And check this out. Check out the occult uh, meaning of we have Saturn. Saturn, Saturn is the same thing as Kronos in Greek, same God, different name, many names. Um, check this out. His father was Uranus. That's uh, We talked about Uranus. That, uh, there's a reason why they make it a stupid name. It seems like this is the name they've actually given possibly, possibly to our creator, which is why it's, this, this planet is always dog. Is given the worst name, and it's yeah, a bunch of stuff. But continuing, check this out. Kronos was the youngest. Kronos wanted to rule the universe, so he overthrew his father Uranus. Wow, that sounds like literally Satan of the Bible in plain sight. And this is just some weird Greek mythology stuff, but they put truth in plain sight a lot of times if you have eyes to see. So the ancient name of Saturn was Kronos, because Greek mythology was over before Roman uh, mythology, uh, or El, Elohim, was the name of their god. Hence the Lord of the Rings. If you watch Lord of the Rings, the, the eye is a serpent fiery eye, and it, uh, he was the ring that, uh, that ruled them all. Um, oh, and then it just, yeah. Uh, But yeah, they're saying that there's a whole cult derived from L. Look it up. Like, it's not hard to look this stuff up. 
whole cult around this stuff. And then I'll oh, just showing Kronos over here, showing that it, Kronos right here, boom, is the same uh, as Saturn. It, it, he is known, uh, Kronos, Saturn is known as Father Time. And he has a sickle. That's interesting because is it the father? Oh, yeah, look at, he is a serpent. Look at this. Kronos, which is Saturn, the animal is a serpent, a snake. His day is Saturday from the planet Saturn. And he has a sickle for a harvest, the god of harvest. Well, all of this sounds like the father, what the father is. Father is in control of time. He will bring a harvest of his people. He has a day that ain't Saturday, um, etc. It's just a lot of truth in plain sight. It's the same deity. So just throwing a little bit, I don't like to do a ton of bit gematria, but uh, the devil uses it. So I want to show you how he uses it. Saturn has a gematria of 26. Uh, if you watch the Code of Mankind study, we know that our flesh has to die. Our flesh isn't coming with us because it's of this world. Is it a coincidence that Saturn equals 26? Man, were well, created on a 26th verse of the Bible. Man has 206 bones. These words, carbon, bones, skeleton, temple, skin, organ, tongue, etc., all have a gematria of 26 because this makes up the flesh of a body. Then all the pagan structures and names has a lot of 26. Our alphabet has the, the curse alphabet of the ling English uh, language uses 26 letters. The word letter even means 26 from Mason, Masonic Temple to spell to God, Apollo to the Tetragrammaton and Azazel all equal 26. Probably because they're all connected. And Azazel is a spotlight of this. We're going to touch on Azazel in a little bit. Oh, right now. Excuse me. Right now. So Azazel, Azazel, the seal of Azazel. A seal is a, a seal used for magical powers. The seal of Saturn and Azazel are identical. Identical. Because what I'm insinuating is Azazel is Saturn as well. Just like Kronos is Saturn, Azazel is Saturn. Even in astrology, Saturn, well, Saturn is associated with Saturday. The astrological, astrological signs of Capricorn. Capricorn is a sign over Saturn. Capricorn is a goat. You don't know yet. Azazel is a goat. Azazel equals a goat. We know why he's a goat. We uh, I'm just throw this in here, Enoch 9.5. You have seen what Azazel has done, how he has taught every species of iniquity upon earth and has disclosed to the world all the secret things which are done in heaven. Leviticus 16, this is a touch on Day of Atonement. And he shall take the two goats, and cause them to stand before the Most High at the door of the tabernacle of Orances. And Aaron shall put upon the goats equal lots. One lot for the name of the Most High and one lot for Azazel. Azazel is the goat. Get it? Why everyone calls themselves the goat in sports? They worship Saturn, which is Azazel. So it's a good thing for them to be called a goat because they're getting compared to their god, Saturn. And he shall throw them into the vase and draw them out and put them upon the goats. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which came up the lot of the name of the Most High and put and make him a sin offering. And the goat on which came up the lot for Azazel, he shall make to stand alive before the Most High to expatiate for the sins of the people of the house of Yasharala by sending him to die in a place rough and hard in the rocky desert. 
um, in the wilderness. Azazel is the goat, and the goat is Baphomet. Everything's connected. So the Baphomet that's standing in front of the Church of Satan is Saturn, which is the same God over Judaism and all the other religions. You see how you see how they did that? Different look, different creature, same God, same result. Again, Haya said to Raphael, you see the L? Everything's with L because I'm just going to read what it is because everybody's named after Azazel. This is where the L comes from, family. Bind Azazel hand and foot and cast him into darkness and open up the desert, which is Dudael. Cast him there. Um, yeah, you can read the rest of your own. This is just throwing them in a rocky desert. Um, Screw it, I'll just read it. Throw upon him, um, hurled and pointed stones, covering him with darkness. There shall remain forever, cover his face, that he may not see the light. And in the great day of judgment, let him be cast into the fire. Restore the earth, which the angels have corrupted and announce life to it, that I may revive it. All the sons of men shall not perish in consequence of every secret by which the watchers have destroyed and which they have taught their offspring. All the children have been corrupted by the effects of the teaching of Azazel. Wouldn't that make sense? That Saturn is the angel that all sin and corruption is the origin of. All sin is put on Azazel. To him, therefore, ascribe the whole crime. But of course, he didn't do it alone. Enoch 55, ye mighty kings who dwell on the earth, ye shall have to behold my elect one, Messiah, how he sits on the throne of glory and judges Azazel and all his associates and all his hosts in the name of the Adon of spirits. So he didn't do it alone. That's why all, like the sun god, all the other gods is his associates and all his hosts. But they all point back to Saturn. Everyone points back to Saturn. Clear as day. Yeah, Simyaza, uh, Gadiel. There's levels to this. Obviously, Azazel stood out in his actions. Obviously, he didn't do it alone. But there was only one, one angel that says to him, therefore, ascribe the whole crime. If this, if Azazel ain't Satan, at least the epitome of sin, Azazel represents sin. That's why the entire crime, which is sin, goes upon the goat, which is Baphomet. The scapegoat of Day of Atonement is all built around Azazel. And let's let's put something in perspective. Gadiel, um, Sim, Sim, Sim Yaza, L or whatever, they could have been higher ranking angels. Sure. This, this is about the angel that have done the worst with the shortest amount of time, it sounds like. Not necessarily if Gadiel outranked him or not, or, or maybe Gadiel could have been the first one. I don't know. We only have, uh, yeah, or Mustema. But Mustema obviously was a, a, a different angel than Azazel because Azazel is binded up um, well before the books, uh, the stuff that was given, talked to Mustema at that time as well. So there is many angels. Like I said, there's many day uh, devils, many devils, but there's only one Satan. There's only one army against us. And the, the, the root and the worst of that army, obviously, it's got to be Azazel, period. It's got to be. 
There ain't nobody that's even with somewhat comparable. Azazel got a whole day of sin uh, of reckoning for him. Day of uh, Day of Atonement is built around one fallen angel. And that being said, Azazel is Saturn. Check this out, family. Enoch 18, in the columns of the heaven, I beheld fires, which this, uh, descended without number, but neither on high nor into the deep. Over these fountains also I perceived the place which had neither the expanse of heaven above it nor the solid ground beneath it. Neither was there water above it nor anything on wing, but the spot was desolate. Remember, Azazel was thrown in darkness, opening of a desert, of a wilderness that is desolate. And this spot was desolate. And there I beheld seven stars, like great blazing mountains, and like the Ruach entreating me. Then the angel said, this place, until the consummation of heaven and earth, will be the prison of the stars and the host of heaven. The stars which roll over fire are those which transgress the commandment of Allah. Hey, Allah, hi. Therefore, um, before their time arrived. See, before their time arrived. Azazel did it before his time. He did stuff that he was not commanded to do. For they came not in their proper season. Therefore, was he offended with them and bound them until the period of the consummation of their crimes in the secret year. So, like I said, it wasn't just Azazel. There was multiple angels that was imprisoned and punished, but they are uh, um, they are imprisoned in the stars, which makes sense why they, people worship the stars, because there's actually angels. They're actually angels. I'm telling you that the imprisonment of Azazel is Saturn. Hear me out on this. The rings on Saturn represents the yoke of bondage. The rings of Saturn is a representation of them binding him hand and foot. It's the only so-called planet that has rings and everyone wor worships it. And Azazel is depicted as Saturn and he was bound and put a yoke. Check this out. Enoch 21, then I made a circuit to a place in which nothing was completed, desolate, wilderness. And there I beheld either the uh, tremendous, tremendous workmanship of an exalted heaven nor of an established earth, but a desolate spot prepared and ter uh, terrific. There too, I beheld seven stars of heaven bound in it together like a great mountain and like a blazing fire. I ex exclaimed for what species of crime? Uh, same question. And then it just says, these are those of the stars which have transgressed the commandment and are bound. Azazel is the only one that is depicted of being bound hand and foot and thrown into the wilderness of a star. And I believe 100%. That's why symbolism and, and the everything lines up with Azazel being the same as Saturn. So when you worship uh, Saturn, you're worshiping the goat, which is Azazel, which is a Baphomet, which is Satan, which is Rifan, which is Chewin, which is Kronos, which is L. <laughs> you get my point. It's either they're one and the same Saturn or they're a part of his crew that points everyone back to the father of heaven. Saturn. So check this out. Another indication is all the same. We, we start off with Malak. Malak is the tabernacle for the star of Red Fan, which is Saturn worship. The Baphomet has the same logo, signal, sigil as Saturn. And guess what? It, oh, if y'all haven't noticed, the uh, Azazel is the Baphomet. That's why the Baphomet has wings. 
if you didn't notice that the Baphomet has wings because it's Azazel. But children are de depicted around Azazel, just like with Santa. Old Saint Nick is the devil, Satan. And just like Old Saint Nick, uh, Santa is supposed to be sun worship, but guess what? It's based off of the origin of Saturnalia. So you have a day of Christmas built on sun worship, but it's actually real tribute is going to the father. So the son, Apollo, or Jesus, the pagan deity of Messiah, is giving tribute to Saturn because the origin of Christmas is Santa, is Saturnalia. And every single one is about putting kids on their lap. It's the same God. Different way to worship him. There's nothing new, family. Doesn't matter if you are serving any other God outside of the Most High, you're just choosing a way to worship Satan. All right. Read this whole thing real quick. It's Second Kings. This is just going, uh, we're wrapping it up. This is about the end here. We're wrapping it up. Just want to put this whole thing in perspective. Uh, the Most High has been struggling and warned his people, uh, and this kind of just puts it all, all there. For so it was that the children of Yasharala had sinned against Haya, their Alahai, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the land, the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods and walked in the statues of the heathen, whom the Adon cast out from before the children of Yasharala and the kings of Yasharala, which they had made. The children of Yasharala did secretly, and I wanted to point this out. People talk about, like, for example, the Pharisees of the time. Guys, the Pharisees, remember, Paul was a Pharisee. Paul had to leave being a Pharisee to become reborn because Pharisees was in Judaism. So the Pharisees that Messiah was fighting with at his time were Saturn worshipers. And we know this. He calls them the, the, that the son of the devil. We'll get it in a second. But I just want to say that this stuff was done secretly. Children of Israel did this stuff secretly. Those things that were not right against the most high, their Allah high, and they built them up high places in all their cities from the tower of the watchman to the fifth city. And they set them up images in groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they built, they burnt incense in all the high places as did the heathen whom Haya carried away before them and wrought wicked things to provoke Haya to anger for they served idols, whereof Haya had said unto them, ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Most High testified against Yasharala and against Judah for all the prophets and by all the seers, which is pretty much prophet, saying, turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I had commanded your fathers in which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets, notwithstanding they would not hear, but harden their necks. This is what happened to Stephen. They hardened their necks when Stephen preached to them about it, like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in Haya, their Allah and they rejected his statutes and his command, uh, his covenant that he made with their fathers, his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity. Everything is vanity. It became vain. It went after the heathen that were around about them concerning whom Haya had charged them that they should, <clears throat> they should not do like them and they left all the commandments of the most high their Allah high and made them molten images two calves and made a grove 
and worship all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. And that's another thing, family. We were talking about the original golden calf. They made, they remade this structure in Israel. They made a structure with two calves and served, um, did Malak sacrifices and served Baal. That's what I was saying. It's the same stuff. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire. Two calves served Baal, passed through the fire, used divination and enchantments and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Most High and provoke him to anger. Howbeit, every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made. Remember that. The Samaritans had made. They are part of all of this, all these nations. Every nation in their city, cities wherein they dwelt, in the men of Babylon, may Sukoth, whatever, in the men, et cetera, et cetera, all these nations, they all these nations burnt their children in fire. Doesn't matter. You see, all these different gods and nations, they all of them has the same rituals. Onto this day. Unto this day, and I mean this right now, family, unto this day, they do after the former manners. They fear not the most high, higher, neither do they after their statutes or after their ordinances or after the law commandment, which Haya commanded the children of Yaakov, whom he named Yasharala. How be it, they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So these nations feared Haya and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as their fathers did. So do they do this day? Huh, I don't know what it says. So they feared. I, I think I don't know if it meant that. Maybe it could be a verse off or whatever. They fear not the Most High, obviously. Ain't nothing changed. Nothing changed. And I say this because ain't nothing changed. Woe to them that set at naught Zion. And that trust in the mountain of Samara. They have gathered the harvest of the heads of the nations, and they have gone in themselves. Ye who are approaching the evil day, who are drawing near and adopting false Sabbaths. Remember, in Amos 5, at the end of Amos 5, it set the foundation for the beginning of Amos 6. Amos 5, he was talking to Israelites saying he despised his feasts and burnt offerings because they took up the tabernacle of Malak and they served the God of Remphan. And we see that the Samaritans were a part of all of these idols that did exactly that. And guess what? They all brought false Sabbaths. I wonder what false Sabbath that would be. Well, maybe the Sabbath that goes with Saturn, that's named after Saturn. How about that? Galatians, we already uh, confirmed that Judaism, the star that belongs, uh, star of Rifan belongs to Judaism based off of what Paul was in when he was honoring that star. And we know, I said this throughout, now here's the verse, Ecclesiastes 1.9. The thing that has been, it is that which shall be. And some people go, well, there is no record of there being a false Sabbath, them doing this. Yeah, if you read and study, the children of Yasharala did secretly those things that were not right against the Most High. He, he tells us, he, he has told us they've done the, all this stuff secretly. And obviously, at, at certain times, publicly, because the whole nation became, uh, you know, 
pagan in a sense. Ain't nothing new. Samaritans and everybody else doing Malak uh, sacrifices for the star of Brimfan, approaching false Sabbaths. And this is in the Septuagint. Makes you think why it was taken out. Don't want people looking for that false Sabbath now, do they? And it goes all the way to the names. Everything's false, which I was talking about with the L's and the y'alls. Everybody, everything that's been given to you is wrong. And it shall be at the day, says the Most High, that thou shalt call me Isha. This is my husband. This is talking about the wedding feast, meaning his people are gathered at the at tabernacles, in, in other words, at the end of the days. It shall call me no more Bailey, for I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. So the name that everyone is calling themselves is literally Satan. He's telling you, Baal is just, uh, uh, Baal is not a name. Baal, God, um, those are not names. Malak, that's not like a, a so-called name for a deity, it's 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 a it's 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 a persona, it's a title. No one's no one's calling themselves Baal. They're naming themselves after Satan, which is Baal, their master, their lord. If you go into context of the name from the very first captivity in Babylon, Daniel one seven. He gave unto Daniel the name of Bill Chazar and the rest of them. In other words, from the get-go, the Israelites were getting different names. They were taking out the Most High's name out of their mouth and changing their names to the point after generations they wouldn't even remember it. Think about it. The slavery in America after multiple generations. You're not going to remember who you are when you don't know your you what you they change your name. They change your parents' name, they change your grandfather's name. Then you don't know who you are, where you're from. They can tell you exactly anything you want, and you will believe it. Another example, 1 Corinthians. Paul was hanging with Apollos, which was a minister of the most high. In a, so we have someone that is a minister of the Most High named after a pagan god. We given the examples. People don't even know how what to name their children. Everyone's serving other Allahims. Jeremiah 23, 27, wish to think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor as their father's have forgotten my name for Baal. But everybody wants to keep playing around. At the end of the day, I can say this about the names. It there is a there is a mercy given because obviously in Hosea he says that he will take the names out of their mouth. So if you're still using these names there seems like there's going to be some mercy for it because you're obviously made it to the wedding. But he's going to have to tell you to shut up and stop using it and take it out of your mouth because that's not my name and that's not your name. Everything that we have been given, why you think the person that wrote the song Hallelujah was a Mason? Look it up. Uh, Freemasons in their churches, they, they sing Hallelujah. Because that's their God. It's like in plain sight. It's all connected. It's all connected. And I wanted to I wanted to post this. If you look, I was just on Instagram uh, two days ago. And I came across this page, which is, uh, if you look at the top, why Satanism? He's promoting Satanism. Devil's music. Single witchcraft. This is a a occult page. And then look, we have a pagan god Horus. We have Saturn, another pagan god. We have the Star of Renfan. We have the Baphomet. 
And look what goes well with all of it. The tetragrammaton. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. It goes so well with it. It's on everyone's satanic page. Hmm. Very interesting. Matthew 12, 25, 26. And Yasha knew their thoughts and said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? I'm here to tell you, family, this is an illustration of his kingdom. All these different deities all belong on the same page. Horus can coexist with Baphomet, can coexist with Renfan, can coexist to the, with the uh, uh, astrology and Saturn worship, and can coexist with the Tetragrammaton because Hasatan's kingdom is not divided. It is in unison. Satan is not casting out Satan, y'all. The Most High is giving you eyes to see so you can pick a side. Because there are many devils, as you can see, in one Satan. John 8, 44. Ye are of your, your father, the devil. In the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Revelation 3, 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. These are two different people, family. These are real Israelites in John 8, 44. And these are the fake Jews but they have the same thing in common, don't they? They are of Satan. It doesn't matter what religion. It doesn't matter what time frame. It doesn't matter what pagan God. There are many devils, but one Satan. So submit yourselves, therefore, to Ahia. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to the Most High, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Adon, and he shall lift you up. Amen. And that is the conclusion of this study. Shabbat Shalom Yasharala. I pray this study was a blessing to each and every one of you. Um, this will be Post it on the YouTube. Um, if you have questions, comments are off on all platforms. If you have a real question, message me, email me, so on. But uh, Shabbat Shalom, Yasharala, and uh, blessings. <laughs>